Hi everyone, it's Arthur here at Arthur Ease Your Mind on YouTube and ArthurEaseYourMind.com. I'm an intuitive consultant and psychic advisor. And as always, thank you for stopping by. If you're new to the channel, welcome. If you're a subscriber, thank you. In the meantime, also thank you for all the likes, the shares, the comments, and just being this wonderful community that you are. I always feel like this big virtual hug when I'm talking to you people. And you're great. Thank you for accepting me as well. Now, last time I gave some suggestions and suggested stop watching the news at least 24 seven. I mean, unless you're a producer for MSNBC or CNN or some other news outlet, there's no need to be watching the news 24 seven. And also I suggested there's some little things we can do to stay out of overwhelm and feeling the sense of resentment. Well, I got some wonderful comments and some nice responses from this. I'd also suggested it's time to give most benevolent outcomes to the world and everyone. And you did. In fact, Soul Inquiries commented, I did a, a prayer where I asked the angels and all beings of light to go around the world. And um, Irena, definitely most benevolent outcomes for Linda and Mel and the rest of the world, especially for innocent victims of hatred. So thank you for those. Also, Rob and Lisa, shalom. I took your advice from the last show regarding no TV 24-7. Been reading, watching old TV, circa I Love Lucy, Hazel, etc. Watch it for 20 minutes. I taped my home design shows on HTV and Magnolia, plus watch sports, play music, drown myself in dirt, dance like no one is watching, the weekend of October 7th to 9th was physically exhausting for me, and I went through trauma. We all did. I called my doctor and said, and she said, unplug. I did. I meditated twice a day. I can't watch the news. It's toxic. Well, congratulations. We have to know what's going on, but it also depends on what news outlet you're watching too. So believe me, there's some wonderful people here on YouTube. That will keep you informed without an agenda. Okay. So, and others, just welcome. I'd also like to say hello to some new friends, Peggy and Clark and Ted, and Roseanne. It's nice to have you in part of the community. So, thank you. Now, the one thing that's been on everyone's mind, of course, is Israel. And this is a hard one for me. I have to be totally honest with you. I'm not the best when it comes to this kind of stuff. I'd rather say, yes, he's going to call you. He's not going to call you. He hates you. He doesn't love you anymore. I do say that sometimes. But what I'm saying is the stuff with Israel, it's really heartbreaking. It's really disturbing. And what I was saying before, many people that are sensitive to stuff like this, it affects them. And that's why I gave the suggestions that I did last time of, and I'm going to put them below again, where I suggest being in nature, being around children, laughter and children's and babies and all that. There's nothing like that unconditional giggling of love. Animals and pets. Talk about unconditional love. Music. I don't care if it's Jimmy Stir's polka band. Just dance, okay? Or BTS. I do like them. And whoever. And then the silence of the heart is the most important. Where you just put your hand over your heart. You breathe in. Breathe out. Feel your heartbeat. Hear your heartbeat. And as you do this, you'll notice your heart starts to slow down. Being so anxious, you don't need to be anxious all the time. I mean, I've done this during, while driving in LA, but I don't close my eyes. That's just a little bit too much. But anyway, I'll post this below. Now getting back to Israel, I'm sorry. I'm like scatterbrained right now. But anyway, getting back to Israel, it's very difficult to feel this pain and to watch what's going on over there. We have to watch it sometimes. We have to see what's going on. We have to know about it. But we don't have to 
immerse ourselves in it. Okay. Know what's happening. Same most benevolent outcomes. Now, crazy shark. Hi, Arthur. What do you see as the outcome for Netanyahu and Hamas? Will it ever come to light that Putin and Iran may be behind this? Well, there's something I don't think anybody realized. The attack was on October 7th. You know what October 7th is? It's Putin's birthday. He turned 71. Had a little party in Chechnya. Yay, Putin. I wonder if Donald called him. Wish him happy birthday. But the thing is, I can be a conspiracy theorist just like anybody else. And say, Gee, I wonder if they did it on his birthday to celebrate. I'm just saying that. I don't believe that. I'm just putting it out there. Let the chips fall where they may. The whole thing is, last time I picked up November 7th, to me, that was a date of some type of ceasefire or agreement or something like that's going to happen. I hope it's earlier and that this gets resolved. And I also suggested that my grandmother actually came to me because it reminded me that November 7th was her birthday. So I didn't get her recipe for Bobco for Shiki, but next time she comes by, I'll ask her. But at the same time, she just said, think about it. So that's why I keep on saying November 7th, 8th, 9th, 10th, around that time, I do feel there's something positive happening. I also get that behind the scenes, Biden, his administration, and allies are working to get this resolved as well, quietly. They're not out there talking every day in front of the press, doing sound bites. They're just doing what they're supposed to be doing behind the scenes. Entertainment purposes only, my opinion, but it's also what I get from my guides. Okay. So the thing is, Roseanne asked, will we be able to get the people who were hijacked free? I guess you mean hostages, taken as hijacked hostages. I have to be honest with you. I don't feel all will be released. Well, alive. I'm sorry. I'm just saying what I get. There will be hostages freed. There will be a ceasefire of some sort. I feel it'll be a UN resolution of some sort too. In the meantime, it's going to take some strategy, but it will happen. Also, because these are extremists, Hamas, Palestinians are not Ham Hamas. Hamas are not all Palestinians. So, you know, Please separate that. It's like not all white Christians are white Christian nationalist supremacists, supremacists or bigots and racists. Okay. But also, when you have a former president talking about how smart Hezbollah is, um, another terrorist group, it makes you wonder why do people want to vote for this man? And appearance only, my opinion, blah, blah, blah. Moving on. Now, I had a reading with a client earlier today, and she was asking if I felt that the Wagner Group had trained Hamas. Now, the Wagner Group, as we know, is Putin's little private army, off the book sort of thing. We got a yes on that. Okay. But I always said that Putin and I ran behind all this. And um, amongst other terrorist groups, I really feel this was a concerted effort. Now, the money behind all this, I have to stress, did not come from the $6 billion that was negotiated with Biden and Iran in exchange for hostages. One has nothing to do with the other. Okay? The thing is, that exchange was for hostages went to aid it went to humanitarian aid it hasn't been released yet the thing is when the money is being spent it'll be known by the u.s government where the money is going to which hospital which humanitarian aid project it's not going into the coffers of the military complex in iran or anywhere else so get that out of your head and if your crazy uncle keeps on telling you that's what is happening, don't send me a Christmas card this year. Or you can, but don't sign it, love. 
in the meantime, it's there are better psychics out there that can see into this more than I can. I'm just giving you the cliff note version of what I'm getting. So I would suggest checking out some other psychics here on YouTube. And they may be able to help you give you more insight into what more than I can. I'm just giving you what I get. Okay. Because there's enough craziness in this world right now besides just this. But this is enough. And speaking of crazy, Speaker of the House. Now, everyone was feeling that Steve Solis would get in there. Well, he got nominated, but he didn't want it. But again, there were not there were not enough votes from what I'm hearing. So he decided not to run. Also, you know, to listen to Marty Taylor Green, the guy is ready for his deathbed, so they wouldn't vote for him anyway, which is not the case. So now Jim Jordan is back in the news. In fact, um, Catherine says, hello, amazing enough, Jim Jordan is current House Speaker nominee. Do you see him getting voted in? No. No. I still do not get Jim Jordan in there. The thing is, they had a closed vote session today with Jim Jordan getting 124 votes. And the new guy, who I actually like, kind of, for a Republican, was Austin Scott of Georgia's 8th District that threw his hat in the ring. He had 81 votes. Now, he said they're all idiots. Quote, unquote. And... You know, the thing is, he did say that, you know, Biden won the election, but at the same time, he's against gun control, same-sex marriage, abortion, and marijuana legalization. So he's a Republican. But it's someone that could probably work across the aisle. In the meantime, they need 217 votes, and Jim Jordan does not have it. And I really feel there's going to be a deal made with somebody and the Democrats that's going to get in. I do not feel it's Jim Jordan. And in the worst case scenario, if Jim Jordan does get in, it's short-lived. It is short-lived. My guys are saying three months at the most, if it's a big, if he gets in. All right. Just enough to muck everything up. And the thing is here, they did this vote today all proud of themselves, that there's no Speaker of the House, they don't have a conclusive vote, and they went home for the weekend. Isn't that nice? They cannot vote for A for Israel because there's no Speaker of the House. They can't talk anything about Ukraine aid because there's no Speaker of the House. They can't do anything to get this country moving forward because there's no Speaker of the House. And these are people that want to run our country. It's nuts. My opinion personal opinion, but this is what my guides also tell me. So in the meantime, when are we going to get a Speaker of the House? By the end of the month. At the at the Halloween party, probably. We'll see what Joker wins. But they're all in a clown car. And they're not doing anything to help themselves. Now, speaking of crazy, there's Tupperville. Eljoy, hi Arthur. When will Tupperville's blocking of military appointments be stopped? Uh, and Celtics here. Hello, Arthur. Thank you for your meditation videos. You're welcome. Uh, when will Biden outsmart TT stupidity? Will steps be taken to ensure nothing like this ever happens again? Well, first of all, don't forget, Chuck Schumer did get three people through the big one the big ones now we have the rest of the 300 other promotions and people to get through i do feel by the end of the year this will be taken care of there will be some when the democrats take over the house and the senate there will be resolutions that nothing like this will ever happen again it'll be put on the books that not one senator can be responsible for all this madness okay so rest assured it'll be taken care of it's like i always say it this too shall pass it's like a kidney stone and somebody went with me and said well i had a kidney stone and lost my kidney 
I'm sorry. But what I'm saying is it's nuts. It's not going to happen again. The, the thing is, since the Trump presidency, all you ever hear is this has never happened before. Well, it hasn't. Because, you know, you got the lunatics in the clown car. So let's keep on moving forward and let's keep on praying that this they see the light. I mean, really, I know. Now, speaking of craziness, I don't know if you saw this today or not, but George Santos went completely nuts in the hallways today. Apparently, he was like holding this little two-month-old baby and somebody asked, is that your baby? He said, not yet. And then apparently he was asked some questions by American citizens that happened to be Jewish that were like, again, that were questioning Israeli politics when it comes to Palestine. Palestine. And he went insane, calling these guys out, just saying they're monsters, they're hideous, they're people, blah, 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 blah. And then he had the nerve to say, people like this, they're terrorists. They should not be allowed in this building. Really? What about what about some of the people that you work with? They're allowed in the building. They were there for January 6th, weren't they? Um, and the gift that keeps on giving, he suggests more charges were brought against him for taking credit cards from donors and charging personal things on them. And, and so now his criminal indictment charges are up to 23. So I do not see this man's this man being around. In fact, Rose Blue commented, will George Santos be expelled by December 23rd? I get a yes on this. It's going to be the best Christmas present because also there were Republicans and they're all freshman Republicans that want to expel him and they're putting through that he has to be expelled. That this is, I guess they usually rally around their own, but now with 23 indictments or charges, no, he's just unfit, totally unfit to serve. So his days are numbered. And as I've said in past shows, you better learn the words to Chicago song. When you're good to mama, mama's good to you because he's going to be behind bars. Seriously. Now, Sharon, what's going to happen with Judge Cannon and Smith in the document case? As you know, Trump keeps on trying to get the things delayed and little Judge Cannon keeps on letting him get away with stuff, delay, 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 you know, and, but she's doing it in such a way that they can't really like appeal what she's doing to the 11th circuit. So rest assured, it will be taken care of. In the meantime, she's going to be a footnote in history. Okay. So my guys keep on telling me she's not going to be around. And the thing is she may keep on delaying everything for Trump. But what's going on in D.C., that's the real case with the January 6th. That is where he's in doo-doo. That is where he's asking what kind of jumpsuit are they going to make me wear. Again, I'm selling a pattern on Etsy with the little hoodies and jumpsuits for, for all of them. Actually, I donate it. But anyway, so don't worry about Judge Cannon and Smith. And also, later this month, the New York is going or the dc court is going to decide about the gag order yay it's very important because trump is going to gag him and he keeps on pushing and pushing and pushing it's almost like he wants to see how far he can take it he's taken it almost over the edge well as he has taken over the edge but now it's going to catch up to him and every time you hear his people keep on saying his first amendment rights yeah, First Amendment rights. But when you're indicted, especially with 91 counts, you lose your rights. You don't have the same rights as everybody else. So let's see what happens on this. Now, also, Lisa was asking, speaking of Trumpy Dumpty, hi, Arthur, I can't help but feel that Melania knew about most, if not all. Wasn't she his handler, Russian handler? Just kidding. Not really. 
of husband's wrongdoings and maybe even involved in them as well. Will she possibly be indicted on anything? Thank you for your insight and all that you do to keep us sane and less stressed in these crazy times. Much love and blessings to you. Back at you tenfold. Um, the thing is, I've always felt if they come to her, she's got like the binders here. Here's everything. Here's the documents. She's going to like, oh, there's the bus. There's my husband. Oh, sorry. She's going to just toss him under the bus if he doesn't have a heart attack from one too many french fries. I didn't say that out loud, but I mean it. Um, she may get in trouble, but I feel she'll talk her way out of it because she'll have, she'll sell him right down the river, just like Ivanka did. So is it going to be interesting? Like I always said, get the popcorn. I'll bring the butter. It's going to be interesting. But a lot of this is not going to come down till after the Trump stuff gets started. Because that's what Smith wants to do, is go after number one, Mr. Big. And then it all trickles down from there. And let's not forget about Georgia. I mean, that that's a cluster F for him as well. So I guess I'll go to Costco and get tubs of butter for everybody. Anyway. Then Kathy Gladden, it seems the judicial system needs to an overhaul, you think? Bad behavior from judges, attorneys, all the way from local counties to the Supreme Court. Money and power are a huge factor in this. Will this ever stop? Basically, in time. You know, I've always been predicting that we will have more than nine Supreme Court justices. In fact, we'll have 13. I feel that's in four to five years. And the reason behind that is because when they originally voted for the nine Supreme Court justices, we had nine appellate courts. Now we're 13 appellate courts. So it makes sense that we'd have 13 appellate courts. We have 13 Supreme Court justices. Also, I've always felt, I don't know why I say this, but certain members of the Supreme Court will be going bye-bye for health reasons quote, unquote. They said, use your hands on videos. So there you go. Um, Thomas is going to be gone. Now, I've always felt from day one, Kavanaugh is not going to be around long. I don't feel him, you know, being on the, on the court for much longer, maybe two years. But the fact that the FBI never really followed through on anything when he was going through his hearing and that woman testified about being accosted. She was credible. You know, just like Anita Hill was credible. But they have a way of pushing all that aside. But now that it's all coming out about the money and all the trips and all the, you know, it's like, you know, becoming a court. I didn't know that coming a Supreme Court justice would be like being on the price is right. You want a car. You want a trip. You want a, a trip on a yacht. It's insane. It's all going to catch up to them, including Alito, who I believe, according to my sources, which are my guides, leaked everything about Roe versus Wade. And then think, oh my God, who did that? Look in the mirror. So this is going to be an overhaul. But the thing is, it can't stop until it stops and there are enough people coming forward now and as i've said before and other people have said this too we're going through a shift so please raise our vibrations put out the energy so that the more we raise our vibrations the faster it is for positive energy lower vibration the slow vibration it's negative so the more positive, the more the negative has to go away. Okay? It's like when I lived in New York and turned on the light and all the cockroaches would scurry under the refrigerator. That's what it's going to be like. But then they never come back out again. Okay? So, Miss Maddie. Hello, Arthur. Is the new progressive party of Democrats ever going to be the dominating part 
of the Democrats, or are they going to form their own party? They're not going to form their own party. They will come to the surface, believe me. When you look at the clown car people and look at the Democrats, who are the adults in the room? And the fact that now the Republicans are saying McCarthy lost because of the Democrats, why would the Democrats help the Republicans? Why would the Democrats help a man who lied to them? And didn't keep his word and didn't keep his promise about the debt ceiling and everything else. And then he blames, they're all blaming it's the Democrats' fault. Um, what about the 18 Republicans that ousted him? They weren't Democrats. Just saying. So, yeah, the Democrats, believe me, after the election in 2024, it's not going to be like overnight, but eventually. It's a sigh of relief. Okay, it's safe to go back in the water. The shark is gone. Or sharks. Now, Andrea, the North Carolina legislator has a Republican supermajority. They are passing some frightening legislation, such as making it legal to withhold information to the public, repress voting laws, etc. One law would eliminate the governor's power to appoint the state board of elections, and give it to legislative leaders. With the gerrymandering of voting dis districts in this state, is there any hope of turning purple in the future? Thank you for sharing your impressions with this community. I don't do impressions, I just do silly things. But anyway, um, eventually, everything has its time. I mean, eventually this is going to have an expiration date, like the yogurt in the back of the refrigerator. Yes, the Supreme Court is like looking at, oh, what well, they're gerrymandering, it's okay. No, eventually it's all going to change. And you're going to see a big shift in 2025 into 2026 regarding North Carolina. Okay. Entertainment versus only. This is my personal opinion. This is what my guys are giving me and my guys are my sources. Okay. So that's what I'm getting for you guys. It might seem like a shorter show, but I've got a short brain span tonight. But in the meantime, I will be doing a show on Wednesday with Deanne. Yay, I'll bring sock puppets. And Friday with Val. So personal questions on that. And in the meantime, I'm here. And if anyone... You know, I was looking for a reading. Just go to my website, Arthur Ease Your Mind, or at this point, Arthur Lose Your Mind, and, you know, set up an appointment. I'm here for you, okay? So, and as I always say, thank you, thank you, thank you. Vote, vote, vote. But also, please take care of yourself. Stay away from news cycles 24-7. Breathe. That's with a big capital E at the end. Breathe. Do the five exercises I give you. Suggestions. That's your homework assignment. But in the meantime, thanks for stopping by. Thanks for watching. I hope you had a little bit of fun. And just take care of yourself. Take care of others. And above all, be safe. And stay amazing. Bye-bye.